Hi YouTube, it's me. I am trying something different. I'm trying to do play-by-play -play of how to get away with murder. Um, it's on right now, so I'm going to do it during the commercials. If I can talk fast enough, we shall see. Um, this is season six, episode four, I Hate the World. So far we have seen uh, Connor... <clears throat> Um, remember he was hyperventilating, uh, when they like fast forward to the present time, he's hyper hyperventilating. Michaela is banging on the, um, room next door cause they're all being interrogated. So it goes to that and it shows a picture of Annalise's funeral and the fire poker stick and all that. Then it goes to, um, Gabriel listening to... Sam and Annalise's uh, videotapes and all that. And then it starts talking about how she was um, in love with Eve and how Eve was a safe place. Maybe she wasn't really in love with Eve, but more so in love with being with someone that made her feel safe, blah, blah, blah. From there, Bonnie is starting her first uh, day at CNG and Asher's pops up because he wants to ride. Then we go to our first case at CNG for um, everybody to do. It's a dating app and a man is suing for um, discrimination because he keeps getting paired with disabled women. He's disabled himself and he's telling them that they have to change the algorithm because it's discriminatory. And this is new territory because a lot of people know that there aren't a lot of laws that are... Um, the laws haven't caught up with the internet, which everyone, well, not everyone, people know that. So he's saying that she, uh, the owner of the app needs to recreate the algorithm and so it can be less biased towards him or disabled people. And then it jumps to uh, Nate trying to, um, looking through the FBI files about Annalise and whatnot. And, uh... What else? Michaela and Gabriel, they're MIA. And Tegan says, where the hell are they? And she's gone off with Gabriel to find her birth father. And he is supposed to be some high-priced lawyer. And she's going to a conference where he is holding um, a conference or whatever. His name is Solomon Vic. And yeah. That's pretty much what just happened. So I'm going to pause this and I will be back after the next commercial. And we are back. So we see... Sorry, y'all. <laughs> um, it turns out Michaela's dad seems like he's pretty awesome because he's being interviewed during his uh, little uh, conference. And he's saying that women have no power because women tend to um, donate their money other than men invest. So men need to invest in women. And that's the only way women will rise above <laughs> and be more powerful because we have no power, apparently, which is honestly true. Um, especially with white women being the ones who have the, the higher percentage and then the rest of us out here bogus. So in order for women, all women to have, you know, equal everything, kind of, men need to invest. And he said he's willing to invest $500 million into women, uh, women entrepreneurs with, uh, apparently he just got really, 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 <laughs> pockets run very deep. So that's that. So Oliver comes to C&G and he's uh, trying to figure out what's going on with, um, the disabled guy like the case of, of all that so they need him to dig into this guy and see what's going on and what they can use against him in order to not lose their case and uh let me see Tegan sends Bonnie to go get papers so they can rethink or talk about this algorithm and all that and then Bonnie goes and sees Tegan's um 
divorce papers there. So she snatches those up and, you know, the whole little Bonnie and Clyde, I mean Bonnie and Nate thing because she brings them straight to Nate. Nate takes them to the FBI and he says, they were like, oh, what does this have to do with Annalise? He's like, nothing, but if we're going to solve my father's murder, you're going to have to do this for me first and then I'll help you after that. But I don't really think that Nate is going to sell out Annalise at all. He loves her. So then it's uh, Michaela and Gabriel are in um, a hotel room in New York still. Um, I don't know what they plan to do as far as Michaela's dad, but they're listening to the tapes of Sam and Annalise and she's talking about her sexuality and again about how being with Eve, a woman makes her feel safe and whatnot. And uh, would she actually even be with a woman uh, if, you know, her abuse from her uncle, all that stuff. And it's it's so personal that they're listening to that. I'm like, oh my God, that's awful. Like, these are very personal tapes. And then it goes off to Annalise um, on the dating site um, that they're like um, representing. And she's like staring at the screen like, are you into men, women, or both? And she clicks both. And then Tegan comes in and they're like, oh, just go talk to your... She tells uh, Tegan to talk to her wife. And then she's like, her wife's talking to someone else. So, no. And they find out the guy who's um, uh, they're representing is kind of a woman hater. So, we're going to see what goes on from there. So, <clears throat> the late... The dude... What's his name? Carl? The disabled man... He is offered money from the, I can't remember her late name, the lady whose algorithm or whatever he wants to change. He's like, I'll offer you first said one million, whatever million, five million. He's like, this isn't about money. Um, I want you to change the algorithm. And uh, before that, I mentioned that he's like, what is it, an incel where he uh, like has like on a blog where he's like woman hating and just saying all these things about women but he's like he just wants an opportunity to that everybody else has to date women or whatever but all right whatever anyway so we go to Michaela she sees her uh father at excuse me let me fix that <laughs> sees her father or alleged father that she thinks the man Solomon Vic um at a bar and then she tries to run up all thirsty like after he finishes a drink to, gla to grab the glass and take it for a DNA sample, obviously. But she's too slow. The bartender took it. So then it jumps to Oliver, Connor, and Asher. Connor and Ol well, Oliver is swiping on that Inferno app that they're uh, representing. And there's he's talking about he want to have a threesome. And I don't know if he's still high or what. Connor's like, what have you ever, you never even had a threesome. What are you even talking about? He's like, well, I'm open to it. They're going to come and get us anytime soon. Then Annalise is swiping and she finds the other dude that they're representing all with the, on the Inferno app, the other uh, representative, I guess, lawyer. And he, she's like, you lied. You're on the app too. He's like, she, uh, the other lady was too open to give away all that money. Why is she so open to give like one million, five million? So it turns out she's open to give that amount of money because the government wants to uh, buy her algorithm in order to weed out minorities and other people, uh, underprivileged or whatever people for, um, for housing and all this, uh, other stuff. So that's really messed up to, try to use the algorithm for that um <clears throat> and then she tells Tegan about it and she Tegan's kind of like well that's not our problem we're in this to win for our client I'm here to get the power so I can help others I can't sit here and try to be on a soapbox and win for everybody then it jumps to Michaela uh alleged father Solomon Vic while he's talking about all this feminism and how stuff, fair stuff for women and whatnot. So she hops her little self up and she's like, well, what about, um, you know, you or lawyers who go after their clients or, or, you know, dates their clients or something, you know, how do you feel about that? He was like, well, that's, you know, they should be disbarred or whatever or fired and whatnot. She, so she's saying, um, I just want to know your viewpoint on that. So by any circumstance, um, women or any man who goes after their clients and 
who are vulnerable at the time, they should be fired. And he's like, yes, of course. So she just wanted to get his viewpoints on that. So there it goes. And then she used the name, the alias, Laura Castillo. So we get back to the whole thing with Carl wanting to change the algorithm. And then Annalise has a great idea to send an Asher to catch him on the street and give him information on Heidi who owns the algorithm and it's her site and you know send Asher in as like yeah you know women need to get what they deserve like uh they just think they need all this power and you know feeding into that incel uh attitude or whatever that he has how women should be in their place and all this I'm like are you fucking serious so yeah, so he was like, oh, they, you're trying to set me up. But he was like, no, he has hide all of Heidi's passwords, which, you know, women, everybody got a little something in all in their accounts and something, a little something to hide, something, somewhere. So she was reluctant to give it to him, but it was pretty much a trap and he fell for it hard. He posted immediately on Reddit, her a sex tape. And they brought that up in uh, their negotiations, and that can be used as sexual assault. And he's like, oh, you guys are uh, setting me up. And then it was like, um, well, it pinged off of his I IP address, so he didn't even go in anonymous. He was so thirsty to sit there and um, put her up and show her as a slut, um, this woman, that he just put it up there, and now he looks stupid. So he was said he'd rather die before surrendering to a room full of woman, women, which kind of made me like a little like weary. Like, is he going to you? Just, I don't care if he is in a fucking wheelchair. You don't take words like that lightly from anyone. So from there, um, we jump to Nate and uh, Bonnie and all that. And they find out that uh, Tegan has uh, a thing called Barrington Holdings which is a property under Laurel Castillo's name so he's trying to say that Tegan uh, is the one who helped Laurel disappear so they're trying to prove that and Annalise goes and walks up on Carl the disabled man in the hall and he tries to give her some fucking sob story about discrimination like oh you don't know how it is to be discriminated against people walking up to you in a, a supermarket asking you how sex works or looking down at you she was like i am a dark-skinned black woman are you fucking serious she didn't say it like that but seriously you don't talk to a black woman about discrimination boy bye you're a white man you whether you're in a wheelchair chair or not you still have way more fucking power than a very able-bodied black woman so get the fuck out of here don't come and talk to me about that bullshit and she brought him down a peg like if you really want love or whatever if that's really what you're looking for like maybe we can find something what's your end game here so that's pretty much where we're at i'll be back Okay, so they win the case against the creepy disabled man. I don't mean to be saying it like that. Woman hating, whatever. But Annalise is still upset because she thinks that Heidi selling this to the government is like, it's so racist, sexist, bigotry. It's promoting all that and it's handing it over to, especially if we're handing it over to Trump's America. It's bullshit. And then she's like, well, you made your money off of getting... Uh, rapist and all this out of jail and then she was like and then Annalise was like yeah I'm going to hell and so are you and that's it is what it is so uh Heidi's I guess that's her lawyer her representative the one who's been hitting on Annalise the whole time he's trying to you know shoot his shot but she was like are you gay or do you like me are you trying to hit on me and then he was like well do you want to go for a drink and all that and then she's like I don't drink He's like, dessert, dinner, stuff. She's like, I ain't hungry. This playing hard to get. Then she's like, well, I like ice cream. So maybe they're going to go out on a date. And then Asher is all up in his little feeling with the boo boo face because Connor and Oliver trying to get ready for this threesome. That is it really going to happen? Ew. I mean, not because they're gay, but ew. I just don't like them. But anyway, and he's like, oh, why don't anybody want me? Every Everybody says they want the good guy, but Michaela's with someone she left me for somebody she shouldn't have been. But that's not why she left. She didn't leave him for him. She left him for during a scandal crossover. She didn't leave him for that, but whatever. So Bonnie goes and talks to Tegan about her divorce. She said, like, I read your divorce paper. But she was really baiting Tegan to say that, you know, to mention the Barrington stock. And then she said that uh, Jorge... Castillo gifted it to her 
uh, back in Mexico or something a while ago. She was like, that's blood money. She can, uh, her wife can have that money. She don't want it. And as they were talking about that during that, she, the wife was calling her and whatnot. And then I forgot to mention way before, where the hell is Frank? Remember last episode, uh, Frank was trying to look for Laurel and then Laurel's brother pop in and we ain't seen Frank since and he never came home. So I wouldn't say that from before. So yeah, then, um, Gabriel and Michaela have this, uh, he's sitting in the hotel room listening to these, the Annalise and Sam tapes and, you know, just being creepy. And Michaela comes in and she's got this whole little plot and scheme to try to get into Solomon Vick's, her alleged father's room. And he was like, no, why don't you just go talk to this man, you know, and find out his side of the story. She's like, no, he left me and all that. So she has all this resentment. He's like, you know what, this is maybe why people leave you because, it, well, she tried to say, oh, Asher would have done it for me. But she's like, he's like, this is why people probably leave you because you always want to do stuff your way and not actually, like, go about stuff the other way or listen to anyone. It just always has to be what you want and that's it. So she kicks him out. She goes to, um, breaks into his, not breaks in, housekeeping was going into his room. So, yeah, Michaela gets caught up in Solomon's um, hotel room after she, like, kind of pushed her way in through housekeeping, saying, oh, you know, I um, meant to change as the housekeeping was going in there, so whatever. And she's in there hiding after he comes in, and then as she's about to run out, he's like, hey, you know, and then she turns around, and then she, he says, um, she's like, all right, she's trying to talk, he's like, I know who you are, Michaela. So apparently this man has known who she is. And I guess that is her father because he looked at her endearingly. So, okay. So we jump from there to Oliver, Connor, and the dude they found on this fake tender inferno, whatever you want to call it. And they're about to get all freak nasty in this threesome. I thought somebody was going to stop, pause, and be like, wait, I don't want to do this. But I think Oliver was like, I didn't think, expect this to be so easy. So they was about to get it in. So, yeah, that's the only sex we got this episode. And I, okay. So from there, we see Annalise. And um, the dude's name is Robert, uh, the lawyer for um, Heidi, who was representing or with SCNG and representing um, working with Heidi. or It's her personal lawyer. Um, for the Inferno, whatever, tender, fake tender, they're out on their little date. And at least ask him, like, are you working for the FBI? She's, he's like, why would I have to be working for the FBI just to be asking you on a date? Because that's the only time you think somebody want to date you. She's just trying to figure out his angle. And then, you know, she just throws her, like, that's her game, though. Because I, I feel like that's Annalise's game. Like, oh, I'm damaged. I'm broken. And I'm an alcoholic and a bad one. Who's actually a good alcoholic? I mean, you could be a functioning one. And that's a good alcohol. I mean, there, there's no good alcoholic. Um, and, you know, she just says that, like, all this that you see and that I'm put together, it's just a facade or whatever. It's just messy once you get inside and you see. But I feel like that's what she tells all these men and all these people. And they still want more from her. It's like it just turns them on. Like, ooh, yeah. But he told her, like, I'm too old to be trying to fix you or anything. But if you want me to pursue you, that's fine. I'm not going to chase you. So it was kind of a little sexy the way he does it. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Let's see if her and little Roberts or Roberto or whatever, what's going to happen? What's, what's good? If, or if he's really really down for the cause whatever so from there um gabriel is listening to the tapes still and uh it jumps back to annalise um talking about how she broke up with eve and he's like well why did you break up with eve and uh she's like because i met someone else so and it cuts off from there but i'm just gonna save the parts just so i can get out that over with so he pops back up on Annalise and um, he's like, you lied. You said that like Sam was the one who came after you because she did say like, oh, he kissed me and he did this. So she pretty much acted like it was one sided. And um, yeah, so she said she met someone else and then she was like, oh, he's kind. He's this and this and he's my therapist. So that was her throwing, shooting her shot. So, OK, Annalise, let's see. You sound kind of shady now. And you know it. I don't know. She be lying. I don't know. <laughs> it's a little sketchy. So from there, 
um, we see Michaela walk up on Solomon as he's at the bar again. And then he was like, I was hoping I'd see you again. And then she was like, well, he's like, have a seat. She's like, I'm only going to sit down if you answer all of my questions. And he was like, all right, let's, you know, do this. Let's talk. So we'll see if she finds some answers next week or whatnot. And then, you know, Asher's getting ready because, you know, he was going to meet this supermodel whatever who he matched up with on the inferno app or whatever and it turns out it's his sister chloe and he's like oh what are you doing here i'm expecting somebody so she catfished him because she wanted to talk to him um his sister so i don't even remember her from previous seasons if they recast her or if this our first time seeing her or what but yeah so apparently Kat, uh, asher's family or sister wants to talk to him so then we see Tegan. Tegan is in her office and she calls her wife Cora and she tells her that she's finally ready to, I guess, get the divorce and stuff over with. So, yeah. And then, what else? Then um, Robert texts Annalise or whatever saying that they he had a good time and he hosted to see her again. <coughs> and um, what else? But then it jumps to Bonnie and um, Nate, and she tells him the whole Tegan thing, and he was like, why don't you just think that she's bad or whatnot? And she's like, I don't think so. Then Frank shows up, and he is injured and bloody.